Hi, everybody. Good to see you again uh, here with MySonet uh, on the MySonet uh, Facebook Live. I'm excited to be here with you again. I'm Sonny, if you are joining uh, for the first time. For those of you who uh, came back, really excited to see you again and happy that you are uh, joining. Now today, yesterday we talked about guiding principles of digitizing and like, what do you look for? How do you know what to do? That sort of thing. And so I think, you know, good introduction to what we're going to be doing today. But today we're actually going to get into the program, do some digitizing, and I am going to talk with you uh, quite a bit about compensation, density. We had some good questions after the Facebook Live yesterday about digitizing for different types of threads and, you know, different weights and how do you do that. And I also, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, not only the thread, but the fabric too, because sometimes it, it's all about you know, if you know you're gonna stitch something out on a specific type of fabric, you are going to digitize differently than if you're just gonna stitch it out on, um, I kind of call it, you know, that's the, the digitizing houses. They're like the people who make lots of designs, they usually digitize for a woven medium fabric, right? So if you know you're gonna stitch out on leather or things like that. So we're gonna talk a lot about this today. So um, that's what we're really going to get into. For any of you, again, if this is your first time with us on Facebook Live or just a reminder from yesterday, for those of you who are um, who have questions, certainly put that in the comments or in the chat area. Um, I again have some my you know the the great uh, Facebook team here of uh, Ryan and Meredith and Thomas and they're helping to get me your questions so I can make sure to answer those as we go forward. Um, this is being recorded again, so if you have to leave in the middle or if you come in, I guess. I was going to say if you come in in the middle, but if you're not here yet, you wouldn't have hear, heard me say that. But if it's always going to be there for you. So that will be, uh, again, recorded. And so um, if you need to watch it again or do something again, that we will uh, we will have that for you. I also um, we are going to post the artwork, but we're going to do that afterwards and we're going to put that in the comments. So guys, if you have problems either finding it or seeing it, just realize that we will, um, it will be there. But if you have a question, certainly just uh, send us a message and we'll look to that and, you know, get it to you one way or another um, through Facebook Messenger. So please know that we will uh, do that as well. So I'm seeing a few more people are showing up. Um, so I, I'm going to ask if there were any questions, if you're coming back from yesterday, did, were there any other questions besides density and working with uh, different thread styles that you woke up at two o'clock in the morning and started going, oh my gosh, what is it? What did, what were we talking about? So put those in the chat and uh, I'll get those uh, questions for you as well. So. All right, guys, I am going to go ahead and just get started unless there is something that uh, and I don't see anything yet from uh, from the team. So what I want to do is I do want to talk about how we get started and how we know what we're going to do and kind of what size that sort of stuff we want to digitize for. So I'm going to let's go ahead and show you, um, get right into our embroidery software. Now, guys, I didn't talk a lot about this yesterday and it was probably something that I certainly should have. I am working in the MySonet Platinum software. The Platinum software is the software that actually has everything. It has the digitizing program, it has editing, it has basically everything that we have for our MySonet software. Um, 
including the base program, which is like the embroidery. So that's kind of where you always start is you open up in the My Sonet embroidery. And that is where I am here. Now I am going to, let me go ahead, come over here. And in the Platinum software, there is an area that is called Create. Okay, so it is called Create. And I'm gonna click on that Create area. And this is where all of our wizards are housed as well as our digitizing and cross-stitcher and sketch. For some of you who maybe had older versions of our um, SVP softwares, we used to have all of that stuff down here at the bottom. Now it is all up in the top in the create area. So um, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about that. So that's where it is, is up in this create area. If you're working with um, the MySonet software for the first time, or if you're coming again from uh, an upgrade from some of our previous versions, that's where it is. So I mentioned yesterday <laughs> that what we're, what our ultimate goal is, okay? So what our kind of ultimate goal is, is to make a little passport cover. Again, whether you're going to travel tomorrow, whether you're gonna travel in two years, you know, just something kind of fun to mess around with and play with. Um, we're going to use the cover itself is gonna come from the project in the Hoop Wizard. So because it's going to come from the project in the Hoop Wizard, what I want us to do is figure out what size we want this to be. And that is just simply by going again to the Create tab. And I am going to go to Project in the Hoop. Okay, so just Project in the Hoop. You have lots of different options for that. You have not only book covers, I've done a lot of these, a little card holder. I actually made a little credit card holder that is really fun. It's I keep it in my purse. So when I only want to take like my driver's license or and a credit card and a little bit of uh, cash and I don't want to take my whole purse, this is a perfect little thing to have for that. Um, lots of pouches and phone cases, pencil cases. But here is our passport cover that I, like I said, we're going to be working with. There are many styles to choose from. You can see there's lots of fun things, but we are going to work with a blank size, so, or excuse me, a blank uh, version of the cover because we're putting what we want on top of it, okay? So, and tomorrow's when we're gonna put it all together, everyone, we're gonna create the design today, and then tomorrow we're gonna put it all together but I have to know what size I wanna make this first. Okay, so that's why I'm going into this now. So once I have the blank style, it shows me dimensions here, but I'm kind of more of a visual person. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna click okay. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring up the, uh, the actual passport how it's going to be made. The passport cover is going to come up right on screen here. So, and I know you all know this for because if you're working in software or working on your computer, it always takes longer than what you expect. So I just, I had to smile because I'm like, come on, it can do it. Well, it just takes longer when you, it's like the watch pot never boils, right? So I was waiting, my watched passport was not coming up on screen quick enough for me. Um, so here is going to be the passport cover, everyone. So here's gonna be the passport cover. What I need to do is, and this is going to be folded in half, okay? So again, this is the, the full piece like that. And then we're gonna fold it in half for our secondary, you know, for our piece. So what I need to do is I need to measure basically how big this area here is and how big I want my signs or I want my signs to be, okay? So I don't know if you do this. I do this frequently. And I think again, it's really kind of cool. Go to the view tab 
when you're working on this. So I'm just going to click on that View tab. And when I click on the View tab, there is this area or this icon that is called Get Length of Area. Or I guess I added, it's called Get Length. But this little ruler here, this is really cool because what I'm going to do is I know that I want the word passport to be up on top. So I'm just going to kind of click and drag in this area here. And what I'm seeing, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm seeing that it's about 100 millimeters or almost four inches is the size I want my design to be in. Again, I have to click and then drag down to that little um, icon so I can see the size. So that's really what we're doing is we're letting this, uh, we're just trying to determine how big we want to make our design. And just by the way, <laughs> I, I, um, I don't use metric every day as far as uh, my, you know, ruler and, and volume and different things like that. But I do an embroidery. So 100 millimeters to me is pretty, it's, it's four inches. I know that. But if you don't, I love that our software actually shows us not only the metric, but also the English version. So um, it is basically four inches there. So kind of neat to be able to have that. If you haven't noticed that or played around with that, that is uh, great that that is there. All right. Once I know my size, 100 millimeters, okay? So once I know that, I'm just gonna right click, right click, as you're working in the software, everyone, that kind of is what stops things from happening. So if you're, you've got an icon, you, you've used something and it's still there, right click kind of gets you out of it, okay? So that's where, at this point, that's kind of where I am. I just want to make sure. Um, I'm, I'm looking and I appreciate Karen is in there. Um, click the view menu in the menu bar at the top of the monitor. Thank you, Karen, for helping out with that as far as getting us some, uh, some help with the Mac. We're going to work on that. I know that Meredith was looking and there are other things like that. So everyone, um, I know that the Mac is a little bit different. There's going to be a lot of similarities, but uh, do please uh, realize that there there are a few differences and Karen, I appreciate you helping with that. All right, so now that we have our size, we are ready to jump into our create area. So let's go ahead. We're gonna click create. And with that, you want to find the digitizing program, okay? So we're gonna choose the digitizing program. And as we talked yesterday, we're gonna convert a background image into stitches. So we're not gonna start with stitches, like an embroidery that's already done. We're gonna start, create a background image or use a background image and change it over to stitches. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna click that digitizing. And it is, it says opening and digitizing. And one of the great things that I love with the software is you really, it's going to walk you through step by step. So if you want it to, like if you, if you're happy and you know that you don't need all of this help walking through to create a design, you can just cancel down here and it'll pop you right into the digitizing program. But for me, I'm going to let the wizard help me do this. So I'm going to load and actually load or create a background picture because we're gonna load that background picture that I showed you yesterday, this little guy, okay? So this is what we're going to load and then start digitizing over the top of, okay? So I'm gonna load or create a background picture and click next. And in this case, I am going to load a picture. And 
you can see I've got a few different things here I've been playing around with. For those of you who were there yesterday, you can see I've got that Ohio star that I've been playing around with as well. This will open a lot of different styles of images. The ECQ, okay, ECQ, that is a format that is proprietary to our software. That's something that we create within our um, MySonet software. However, JPEG images and PNG images, different images like that, they work just fine. So I actually have both of them here. I am going to use the ECQ file because that's what, like I said, it is proprietary. Either one would work fine, but I'm just gonna choose that guy and click OK. So here it is, and then click Next. Again, letting the wizard walk me through in this case, I don't want that background area around my design when I'm creating. So I'm just going to do down here at the bottom. You can kind of see this is your normal like crop. If you want to rotate the design, you can do it. This is your crop. I'm going to automatically crop as close in as I can to that image. See how that happened? It just cropped automatically right in there. If you have a picture, now um, sometimes we like take a background picture with a camera or something like that and it's not quite in uh, perspective, it might be skewed a little bit. That's what this guy does. It allows us to uh, correct any of that skewing. So that's kind of cool too. But anyway, I digress. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do that. And let's click next. Now here's where we're going to choose our design size. Okay, everyone, so this is where you're gonna choose your design size. You can either fit your design into a hoop, which in this case, I have the 260 by 260 hoop. So I have one of our um, bigger square hoops, quilters hoops. I don't want it that big. That's why we took the time at the beginning, right? We took the time at the beginning to see what size we needed to make. So in my case, I'm going to enter a design size. We measured the height. We measured how tall this design was to be. So the size is gonna be 100 millimeters in height. Everyone, you can choose height or width, but not both. It's gonna make it proportional. So I am gonna go ahead and choose height for that and then click finish. And it's gonna pop it into the background image, right? So no stitches yet, this is just the background image. So we're just gonna pop that right in there. And now I wanna zoom in so we can see this a little bit closer up. Okay, so everyone, we've got our background. We knew we wanted to do this. I talked yesterday pretty heavily about making your plan, I think, right? So for anyone who was here yesterday, that was like one of the big principles of our digitizing is make your plan, print it out. I force you to do that. You don't have to, but I still like to have a physical some something to do. So for me, what I am gonna do and how, I, I stopped and the reason why I stopped is again, you all, you may decide you wanna work from the bottom up. I actually like to work from the top down. So it's my personal preference to do that. So I'm gonna start with the furthest thing back, which is the post. I'm gonna start at the top and do each of the pieces of the post. And then I'm gonna work my way up and so, I'm gonna work number five, which is gonna be my yellow piece, then six, and then seven. Okay, so I'm gonna go down, then I'm gonna go up. This, doing this little thing, doing this little piece, you're gonna learn a lot about a few different things here, everybody. So um, that's why I chose this to have us work on this today. So, we are going to choose 
what is called point create at the top. And with that point create here, so with this point create, I'm going to place all objects, all of the pieces of the design, okay? And I was talking with one of, one of our team members, Meredith, and she, uh, I was saying, I'm gonna make you work hard and then I'm gonna show you an easy way to do something, but I'm gonna make you work hard to start with. So the very first thing we have to do is we're going to work on this piece and we have to say, gosh, do I want this to be a fill? Do I want it to be a satin stitch? Do I want it to be tapered motifs? You're making the choice now of what you want this to be. And something else that's really kind of important and kind of key is I'm gonna come back up to that view tab and we're going to do what's called get length. And I wanna see how big, you know, we know that this is gonna be a hundred millimeters or four inches here, but how wide is this little piece? So I'm just gonna click and drag. And what I can see is it's about between like eight, seven and eight millimeters as far as a stitch that goes across here. The reason why that's important, everyone, is that determines, is this going to be a fill or is it going to be a satin stitch? Like, am I going to do a satin stitch like on my sewing machine or am I going to do a fill area that's going to fill it all in? Because it's really about seven millimeters, seven to eight millimeters, a satin stitch is fine. If we were making this huge and that was like 20 millimeters across, guess what? We need to make that into a fill area. So this is where you determine how your design is going to look and you are going to um, digitize for the size your design is. So does that make sense? I'm not, I, I just want to kind of ask the team, have there been any thoughts or questions or some, anybody saying, yeah, that makes sense? <laughs> I just want to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page before we get going here. So, all right. So no questions yet. Thank you, Meredith. I appreciate that. So now that we know this is going to be a satin stitch because it's only going to be about seven millimeters in, in width, going back to my point to create. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a satin column. A satin column is just like everyone, just like your satin stitch on your sewing machine. It goes left and right. That's what a satin column is, just left, right, left, right. So I'm going to choose satin column. I'm going to start up here at the top of my design and go from the left with one point. And then again, just like with a satin stitch, I go from left to the right. So I'm gonna place another point. To place a point, all we're doing is clicking. We're clicking, left clicking on the left, and now I'm gonna left click on the right. And then I'm gonna come way down in here and I'm gonna explain why in just a moment, but I'm gonna come into the orange and go back to the left and then over to the right. Can you all see how there's a little box right here? That is where our satin stitch is going to be placed. So I went from left to right, from left to right. When I have that box placed, I'm gonna right click. You can see my satin stitch here. Can you also see that on my mouse, there's still a little uh, circle. That means this, this tool that I have is still active. So I'm gonna right click again. And now everything is done and I've got my satin stitch placed. So again, satin stitch, left, right, left, right. You can place many more points than this. You could have went one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I'm gonna give you another little tip, everyone. Fewer points in general, fewer points in general is better, okay? Fewer points in, in, uh, in general is better. So that's why I, only, I knew it was gonna be a rectangle. So with a rectangle, guess what? You only need four points. If you had a curve, 
you need more points to go around a curve. Okay, does that make sense to you? Now, got a great question. It says maximum in millimeters for a satin stitch um, versus when you would change it to a fill stitch. In general, my max really is, uh, this was really at its limit, you know, right around eight millimeters, nine millimeters. That's about the max that I like for a satin stitch um, because basically, Think about your sewing machine. That's seven millimeters, nine millimeters. Those are our sewing machine widths. So really that's about as wide as you want for a satin stitch. Otherwise I'll switch it over to a fill stitch. Um, however, I'm gonna show you, you can put texture in a satin stitch. So you can put texture in a satin stitch. So if it's a little bit bigger, you can put texture in and it breaks it up. But in general, seven to nine millimeters, that's about your, your max width. All right, so I forgot something, everyone. I forgot to change my color before I started. I, wanna, I do wanna change this to brown, just because it's a, it's a post. So I'm just going to go over to the color select area and do quick little double click, change it to a brown color. There we go. And I think you can actually see this a little bit easier as well. So once you have this placed, everyone, just a little, again, another little for your information. Now you can move the, the points however you want to move them. So if you see, once you have your points, I always tell people when I'm teaching um, digitizing is don't be too, if, if you're not quite right, you can always change it later. So don't worry about that. You can always move that later. Now, everyone, I am gonna, I wanna zoom in a little bit here for us. All right, so I do wanna zoom in a little bit here. And when I zoom in, what you notice is I told you to bring those last couple little points into the sign. See how I, I came down probably, it's almost, probably a couple millimeters, I, I was making a, a point. This is what is called compensation, everyone. Compensation means if you've ever had a design, now I'm just gonna um, come across here, just so you can see me a little bit more. If you've ever had a design that you have two colors of thread, like right up next to one another, and then when you stitch it out, you have a gap and you see a gap, that means that that design or that digitizer did not put in enough compensation to basically, so you wouldn't have that gap. What they probably did, and I'm just gonna, what they probably did is they just went right to the edge. See how now there's no, it's not overlapping any. So think about compensation as kind of your overlapping. So when you stitch, if there's a little pull of the fabric, it's actually, that's the true name is pull compensation. If there's pull of the fabric, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up a gap. We don't want that. So everyone, let's bring that down and bring this down here just a little bit. So hopefully if you've ever heard the word compensation, that's what it means is it's, the, it's building in like a little overlap. So when the fabric pulls away, you don't have a gap in your stitching. So. All right, so that's pull compensation. We're building that in. Like I said, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. In general, you probably, if you're sewing this on a woven fabric, probably only need just a little bit. Um, if you're sewing on knits, you need more compensation. So that's that fabric thing, right? So that's that fabric thing. So now, I said this was the first thing we wanted to do. This down here is the second thing we want to do. But if you remember from yesterday, one of my pet peeves, you learned very quickly <laughs> that one of my pet peeves is jump stitches. You don't want to like start here and then have a jump stitch to come down to here. It is not nice digitizing. And it just is, you learn very quickly when you see a design that does that someone didn't do it properly. So let's learn how to do this properly. 
we're going to use a running stitch and run from here down to our next piece. That's what nicely digitized designs do. So in my fill area in line, I do not want a pattern fill. I, act, I don't want a line either, okay? So I don't want a satin line, excuse me. What I do want is a running stitch. Now these, for those of you who are working in the MySonet software and you're kind of looking at this, um, these uh, icons work in two different ways. If you click on the top part, so if you click on the top part, it actually turns it on or off. So if it's colored, it's active. If it's not colored, it, it isn't active. So, and down here, if you click on the bottom portion, that's where you choose something else. So that's where choosing a running stitch, okay? So now we're going to create an area or line. So I'm gonna click on that. And did you notice a, that you get, you get a little pink star that comes up, it's right here. And oh, sorry guys, you don't need to see me. Sorry, there we go. That's much better for you. So again, click on the top, turn something, uh, it turns something on or off. Click on this bottom area, you choose what it's going to be. Then when you're ready, you create an area or line and this is the starting point that we want to connect to. So if I click here, right in that starting point, see how my mouse turned into a little dashed line. So I'm gonna click there. I'm just gonna place a couple points. Again, you don't need lots of points for this because it's not, you don't have to be super accurate or anything, okay? When I get down to where I'm gonna start my next satin stitch, I'm gonna do a right click to place the running stitch and a right click again to basically stop the tool. So really it's right click twice, all right? Come back to my satin column. So let's zoom down and come down here a little bit. Come back to my satin column. There's my little star again, my little pink star. So I'm gonna move my mouse until it turns to a little dash. That means I'm connecting. I'm gonna click and then click from the left to the right, from the left and then to the right. Right click twice to end the tool. And again, if it isn't quite where you want it to be, you can always go back and move those points after the fact. All right, so here we go. On to the next thing. So again, this is why this little design is so great for you to practice on because guess what? You're repeating things over and over. You learn by re repetition and practice. So this time, Back to my running stitch, create area or line. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna mess up on purpose. I wish I could say I always messed up on purpose. I usually just mess up, <laughs> but why I wanna share this with you is, remember I, I said I want to go ahead and I wanna move my mouse until I get the dash. That means I'm connecting the two uh, areas, the two objects. If I forget and I don't connect those, I'm gonna just put some points here. Again, this is just to kind of let you, you all see what happens. First of all, and then I right click twice to end the tool. Right now I've got this little running stitch. You can kind of see there's just this little, um, actually it looks almost like a, a little drawn line, but that's your running stitch, but it doesn't connect up here. It is not connected with this other piece. Everyone, I want you to look over on the far left-hand side in my film strip here. And with my film strip, do you see how between this satin column and this running stitch, there is a line that goes across. So between objects four and five, there's a line that goes across. What that line means is now I have a jump stitch. There is a jump stitch. Anytime you see that line in the film strip like that, that means you have a jump stitch in your design. I don't know if you knew that. It took me a while to figure that out. So the reason why I, sh I share that with you is again, I don't want that jump stitch. 
So I can do a couple things. I can either undo and replace my points or I can simply click on the running stitch and move this. Watch closely because I'm going to move this until look how my mouse just changed to the dash. That means I found the other point. So I have to make sure <laughs> and it, it clicked in real easy, right? It actually clicked in real easy. So once it's connected, come back over here on the left-hand side, see how that line is gone. So that way you can always get rid of those jump stitches. You can always connect those points after if you, uh, if you forget, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish satin column again. And <laughs> I, almost, I almost did another mistake not on purpose. When you choose to place something like a satin column, it's gonna be placed wherever, or it's gonna be placed after whatever you have highlighted over here in the uh, film strip. So guys, I know that, I say I know, I, I don't know. I don't know how much you're digitizing now, and I don't know how much you wanna digitize in the future, but these are all important things to know so I'm clicking on the running stitch because I actually want my next satin to be after that one. So I'm gonna click on satin column now and look here, I've got my little point. So I'm gonna go click, 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 right click once to place the satin, right click again to finish off the tool, okay. So again, just repetition as we're going along. Down here in the bottom right-hand side, there is something that is called um, Zoom to Fit. I actually call it my get out of jail free card because what it's doing is it's allowing me to see everything right there in case I'm zoomed in way too far. All right, so one last time, we're gonna do a running stitch and a satin stitch. Personally, I'm gonna run all the way down to the bottom and then work my way up to the top because the next thing I'm gonna do is this little sign here. So it's just my personal preference to actually run all the way down to this bottom area here. And then with the satin column, I'm gonna come, come back up. Even on this bigger piece, I'm only gonna place four points because guess what? You don't, first of all, you don't need any more. And secondly, that way it keeps it nice and straight. All right. So any other, any comments or anything else going on guys that I need to know about? Because we're basically getting ready to move on and notice I didn't connect. Did, did you all see that? Was that one of the comments, Sonny, you didn't connect? I just went ahead and moved that up. All right. Ah, so someone just asked, what is the difference if I look up here? Um, I want to say satin columns and satin fills. Um, part of it is how it's placed like a satin column is always left, right, left, right, left, right. That, that's part of the difference. A satin fill or a satin area, you're placing points like around an area. So you can place a point around in a circle, but it just means there's gonna be really long stitches. I, I'm, um, I, I think that's what you're asking. I'm not completely positive, but like a satin fill, has much longer stitches. So you usually are gonna break it up, a satin column, but it's also how you place points, like going around an area versus left, right, left, right. Satin column, always think of as your sewing machine, left, right, left, right, okay? Always select the type of stitch you want. I, In general, I do, that's part of my planning is I always like to, to have an idea of what stitch I want. Can I go back and change it later? Yes, I can. But in general, I always wanna like, 
I always, I've got my plan. I've kind of already decided what I'm going to do. And then if I want to change it, I will go back and change it. But almost always I'm going to choose, like in this case, the satin column, left, right, left, right, versus like a satin area or a fill, which we're going to work with fills here in just a moment, where you go around an area. Okay. Anything else? I think we're ready to go on to the next piece. And so here I am with my last satin column. And I want to share with you, um, I don't know if you noticed. Okay, I don't know if you noticed. You can see it pretty well on this. Can you see how my post has a pattern to it? It looks like, uh, it really does look like a, um, um, oh gosh, a, a piece of wood. You know, that that's the whole point of what I was trying to work with this. And so this is actually pretty cool, everyone. I want all four of these satin pieces to have a little texture to them. To get that texture, it's really easy. Go over here to your satin column. So go over here to your satin column and do a right click. So I'm in the film strip. This is one of the cool things about the MySonet software um, because what I'll do is I'll do a right click and at the very bottom, there's something that says global properties, global properties. What properties does is it will change something for whatever you have selected. Global properties will change every single satin column that is in the film strip that you see in the film strip. So I'm gonna click on global properties. And in this case right here, I'm going to choose a pattern. And these patterns, this is why I mentioned to you earlier, if you do have a larger um, satin stitch or satin column, you can always add texture by using some of these patterns. There are some really, really cool patterns to choose from. Um, in this case, I'm gonna choose the plants and flowers. And I happen to know that I like this one, number 167. So I just cho chose that. Um, if you have been working with the MySonet software or you're thinking about this, I, I actually like to use, um, let's go ahead and click okay. And you can see now how there's just a really cool pattern that comes with this. Now, um, I could make each one a different pattern. I could try different ones here or there, but basically I had already played and saw this was this. Um, there's a great question. It says, how often do I save my work as I continue? It depends a little bit on how involved the piece is. Like this one, it's not as super involved, so I probably wouldn't save as often, but in general, like if I get done with my post, so I just got done with my post, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to file and I'm going to do a save as. Each piece that I do, that's when I like to do that, that save, save as, whatever it's going to be, right? So um, wherever you're going to save it, whatever you're going to do, save this. It's an EDO file. That's the uh, working file. So Again, for me, what I like to do is I just like to save it after each like section. So do my post, then I'm gonna do the first sign, probably save it again. Doing, uh, um, doing a, the second sign, that sort of thing, all right? So um, the pattern number was one, oh goodness, good. That was a great question. I, Let's see, it's 167 is the pattern number. And the difference again, uh, between using a pattern satin stitch basically, or a, or a fill, there's not a lot of difference everyone, it's just how you place the, um, the, the object. So again, in a fill you would have placed it in a different order than, um, than in a satin column. So once you start putting um, 
gosh, patterns or uh, texture into a satin column, it really is becoming more like a fill. So it's, it's, it's just like, again, for me, left, right, left, right. If I didn't want that pattern, I would still have a satin stitch. If I put in a fill, it will always have some sort of pattern in it. So it's just, again, it's kind of a personal preference going back to you wanting, you know, you being the digitizer, you being the one to decide, do I really want that pattern fill or do I want it to be a satin stitch versus a fill? I, I know that's not a, probably a, a super, you know, a super specific answer because I don't think it really is. It's just what you want, what you want. So good, good questions, everybody. Good questions. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go in and do a color change. And I'm just going to choose hopefully something that you can see in this orange. We're going to actually, can you see right here? This is where um, the color stop actually was. So this was my color change right here. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see this. So there's my color change. And again, this is um, our one of the things that as we do our digitizing, and I'm, I want to put in a single stitch from where the color stop started which was up here to where I'm going to start my, um, my sign. So there's just did a really quick little color, little single stitch here. So if I ever have to move that color stop, it won't move everything else. So it's just one little single stitch and that's right here. And I just, chose where I wanted to start and put that single stitch in. So there's my single stitch right there. Let's now, so this is to your question about pattern or either a fill or a satin column. Why I, I'm gonna choose the pattern fill here. So I want that to turn on. And this time I am going to choose a double zigzag. And what that means is with the double zigzag, it's going to go around my little piece and it's going to do a little zigzag over the top. Okay. And um, so, you know, there are lots of different ways to do this. Now, pattern fill, again, looks like this, right? So that's your fill. And then this is actually. Um, I actually did an applique. So again, it is up to you. I actually said, oh, sorry guys. Um, I actually said, do a pattern fill. Let's change our mind. Let's do an applique because that is what I really want it to be is more of an applique. I hadn't started yet. So to the question of, you know, do I always choose the stitch I want? I could have changed it after, but yeah, I definitely want this. Um, now, with this applique, I'm going to start, and so I'm going to choose create area or line. There's my little star, my little pink star. And when I click here, I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard. So shift key on the keyboard, and that makes a square little dot. And I'm just going around in every Place. See how I'm not adding any extra points. I'm just clicking at every single point with a left click and come up here. And then I'm going to, again, right click and then right click again. And you can see how there is a, um, an applique. So that's the green fabric. And then this is that double zigzag around the outside edge. Okay, so the double zigzag around the outside edge. When I do that now, let's say I want to change something. Let's say I want to change a um, to a different color. So now this time I'm going to right click and I get this little picture or this little uh, window that comes up that the applique, here's my fabric, 
I want to choose, and it takes a moment, I want to choose actually a different color of fabric. So I'm going to choose this orangey color and click OK. For anyone who has been working in the MySonet software, and you want to make lots of changes, but you want to see what happens, click apply rather than OK. Apply lets you see what happens in the background here, but it does not close the window. So if I don't like it or want to change more, I can actually, I don't have to reopen the window. So I don't know if you all knew that, but that's kind of cool and important to know. So here we go again. I'm going to change the double zigzag. All right, so I'm going to work with that, but I'm going to make the zigzag width a little bit more. And then I'm going to click apply again so I can see what the difference is. Okay, so those that's the difference. That's that apply. It makes it a little bit easier. Something else that I do want to share with you is this closed border line. Basically what that does, notice I had stopped. I didn't put the points on top of one another. The program automatically will close that if you use that closed borderline. So I think that's really important that you know that as well. And once we're done with that, we click OK. And I've got my first piece done. So pretty easy, right? So um, we will work to get a written lesson out for this. I'm not exactly sure the best way to do that. So we will work to do that. Keep an eye out here on the MySonet area and uh, see what we can do for that. And so now we're ready to go on to the next bit. That was another question. Sorry, guys. Um, Meredith just wrote to me and I, uh, Meredith, thank you for that because with the satin area as well versus a fill area, a satin area, if you are going on a curve, the actual pattern goes around the curve, which is really cool. Whereas in a fill area, it's always going to be straight up and down. If there's not going to go with the curve of a satin area. So that's another great reason to use a satin column versus uh, a fill area. So it is actually a really great thing to do with that. Now, everybody, I'm going to work on this next little piece here. Let's do another color change. We're going to come into here and just choose something like that. This time, I do want a pattern fill. I do not want an applique. And I'm going to create the area or line. In our case, because we have a color change, okay, I don't have to worry about any jump stitches because with a color change, you're always going to have some sort of jump stitch. So in this case, I'm just going around my area and I'm just gonna do a quick right click and right click again. So this is my fill area, everyone. This is my fill area. Notice I still have that double uh, stitch on the outside. I want to do a quick right click. And this time, instead of the double zigzag, I am going to do a satin line and click apply and let's see what it looks like. So that looks pretty cool, but it's a little wide for me for this. So I'm going to change this again down to two and click apply again. So that looks a little bit nicer. So see how you can see the difference in changes as you're going along with that, okay? Um, when I get this here, okay, so when I am here, I do want you to look at something when I click on the pattern fill, okay? I'm gonna go into options. This is where you can change to different patterns, um, I will say that this is such a small area that the pattern is okay, but the density is what's important, okay? So when the density is what's important here. Guys, when you work with small areas, you are going to make things less dense, okay? I'm going to say it again. Small areas, you're going to make things less dense, what that means here is if something is less dense, the number actually goes up. And there are fewer stitches 
when something is less dense. So what I told for anyone who was here yesterday, what I told you all is, look at that travel. I had this as the density was set at five. I, I it's a little it's a little too far apart. So that's where I'm going to have the density set at four this time, which is a little bit more dense. We had a great question of uh, of working with different color, different weights of thread. Everyone, different weights of thread. If you are working with, and I'm going to come here. This is a this actually is a leather belt that I created a while ago. And I used a, can you see that? That's actually a uh, 12 weight thread. So when you're working on something like leather and you're using heavy weight thread, you have to make whatever you're creating less dense. So the density is less. Heavier threads, less dense. If you're using, the, the there's some beautiful silk threads out there, some beautiful silk threads. Um, those are usually lighter weight, like a 60 weight. Then you're gonna make something more dense. So if you heavier threads, small areas, something's gonna be less dense. Lighter weight threads, larger areas, you can make things more dense, okay? I, hopefully that makes sense to you. So, um, all right. So I know, gosh, time flies when you're having fun here. So this here, I do want to share with you one other thing. And I see I do have one more question, Meredith. Um, but what I want to share with you is if I do choose to have a little pattern. And where's, where's a pattern here that will be great to show this to you with? Um, sorry. Too many choices, right? Too many choices. This is what I was looking for. I wanted you to see this. And I'm going to click OK. If you see this pattern here, guys, if you have not played with this, if you've not played with this, what I want you to see is check out what this little handle does, how you can change the pattern area in your uh, fill pattern to go in different angles and different ways. This is actually really very, very cool. And um, I'm just gonna share one more piece, one more sample with you on that because I hope you'll be able to see this. Can you all see that this little heart that I did, I put in this pattern, but I was, I actually made it so, if I can, Find that piece. Can you see how the heart actually in the pattern? I actually lined it up so I, it would be right in the same area as the heart goes. So the pattern actually, you can not only just can you do that, but you can actually move it around a little bit, which I think is really cool. So you can get things where you want them to be. So that's really fun in the uh, the software. That's one of the really fun things. Now. It's the question was when I opened an embroidery, went to digitize, how do I get that background image? And so again, that background image can either be done through the wizard or um, when you come into file, you're going to, uh, that's not where, it's actually going to be, um, need to come in through edit or through the wizard to get that. So it's actually bring in a background wizard or bring in a background and you can do that by coming in here and you can edit the background or you can bring in a background here or you can do it through the wizard, okay? So I hope, okay, so I'm just gonna look uh, real quick here and see, uh, see if, if we're going along. I hope you guys are getting some good information out of this. I, I love to digitize some of the things that I think are really fun. Um, we've been doing today, so I guess that's one of the neat things. 
I am going to do this next one really fast. And basically I'm gonna do another applique here. So again, I'm gonna choose the applique. I am going to change color. Okay, so I am gonna change color and click okay. And when I change color, create area or line, doing the exact same piece. Hold down the shift key gives us a point. Hold down the shift key and gives us a point. Right click. And then if I don't want that little zigzag again, all right, so if I don't want that little zigzag again, I can come in here and I can choose either a running stitch, a satin line, motif line, whatever I want. Click that apply. And now I have my little design. All right. Zoom in a little bit. Um, that is, that you guys, we learned an awful lot today, whether or not you, uh, you, you think we did or not. This was such a small project, but we learned, remember, compensation, right? So you always want to go over your digitizing a little bit. That's really important. The satin versus the fill, being able to add a satin column, left, right, left, right. That's very important. When you're talking about doing, uh, moving from one area to the next using that running stitch as you go through. So using the running stitch as you go through with that. That I think, again, really important and making sure you're connecting those pieces so you do not have jump stitches. So those, again, lots of really important pieces for that uh, as we go through and also with density. Density uh, for smaller pieces, make sure that you're using um, smaller, uh, Pardon me, let me get back here if I can. So um, with density, if you're using a small area or if you're using um, heavier weight thread, it's going to be less dense. And then for larger areas or lighter weight thread, more dense. Okay. So I know, guys, we're out of time, but I just want to share with you one last thing. Actually, we're going to be back again tomorrow. So I can help, I can work on this a little bit more and share with you tomorrow. I will save this, by the way. But with our little uh, design player and preview for those of you in Mac, I did learn that part yesterday. Thank I am, um, we're going to work on that. But what I want to share is this is how my little design that I created is going to stitch out. So this is how it's going to stitch back. And in the software, it does tell you when you need to stop and actually place your applique fabric. Stop, cut around the applique fabric. So those are all very important. Here, underlay, notice automatically there was underlay put in under the fill not around, and I'll, I'll bring this back up tomorrow. So how if you did not get underlay put in, okay, if you do not get underlay put in, um, how you can make that change. But if it is put in, how that works with the underlay helps hold your fabric nice and flat. And I realized that Again, we need more time for all of this because uh, there's lots of really interesting things that, that we don't want to forget um, as we go forward. So uh, I do want to make sure that we are going to put up in the, uh, in the comments afterward, we are going to put up the background image. So you will have that uh, to take home. I will work to get how to we got to figure out where to put the written lesson for you. So we'll figure that out um, if you want to have a written lesson for this. And if there are any other questions, remember tomorrow we're going to finish this out, everyone. So we're going to, I want to talk with you about putting an underlay. So I'm going to save this. We're going to finish this out and then put it into our um, passport cover. So anything else, guys, that you can think of? I hope you, 
I hope you really did have an opportunity and enjoy getting some more information about the digitizing. It is something that is a learned thing. If there's lots of information again out there, but working with the MySonet software, it certainly has made it a lot easier than what it used to be. So that really makes it very nice for us. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. I see some comments coming up. Um, I hope you guys, again, uh, get some good information and we will, like I said, I'm going to save this and certainly uh, we'll continue on tomorrow. Same time, same place. And uh, thanks again, guys, everyone, for, uh, for coming with us and being here. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.